else ever learn Emily Dickinson's poem, I am nobody in school? I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us, don't tell. They banish us, you know. How dreary to be somebody, how public like a frog to tell your name the live long day to an admiring God. In those formative years of Catholic school, I remember seeing Emily Dickinson as an outsider and a bit of a rebel who stood in solidarity with other nobodies against the self-important somebodies. Although I memorized the poem, I wasn't particularly inspired. Recently, I flashed back to how little I knew of Emily Dickinson. Theologian, Episcopal priest, activist, and writer Matthew Fox suggests that Emily Dickinson is a mystic in the line of nature mystics alongside Hildegard and Eckhart. To quote Fox, Emily Dickinson alters the patriarchal debate around the Trinity with all new and far more ancient imagery. It turns out that in the 1800s, Emily Dickinson imagined and created her own Trinity in the name of the bee and the butterfly and the breeze, amen. Fox suggests that Dickinson supplants a person-centered trinity with a creation-centered one. After all, the bee keeps creation going by pollinating flowers and grasses. The butterfly undergoes a life-changing death and resurrection cycle comparable to the Paschal mystery in evolving from a caterpillar to a cocoon to a beautiful winged creature. The breeze is wind, just as spirit is breath. It strikes me as insightful and courageous. Those of you who know me know that I'm not a regular quoting Thomas Aquinas, and yet even Aquinas recognized that revelation comes in two volumes, nature, and scripture. The ancient doctrine of the Trinity emerged at the end of the fourth century, yet it wasn't until the year 1331 that Pope John the 22nd named Trinity Sunday a feast. Somehow, the sense of people encountering Jesus and spirit as encountering God morphed into an esoteric picture of a faraway authoritarian God, rather than a practical, everywhere divine presence. After all that we've lived through these last 15 months, we might benefit from a fresh perspective on Trinity. Today, I wanna to share with you perspective offered by a variety of theologians, recognizing that it is a challenge to wrap language around the mystery of God, we refer to as the Trinity. I have taken the liberty of changing patriarchal gendered language from Father, Son, Spirit to Creator, Wisdom, Spirit. Let's open ourselves to moving beyond our childhood images of Trinity, you know, as an equilateral triangle or three interwoven circles or a shamrock. So I'll start with St. Augustine's metaphor for Trinity. Again, another person I don't often quote. Augustine saw God as lover, beloved, and love itself. In 370 to 430 
when Augustine wrote, the core of the Trinitarian message was love. Fast forward to the 14th century when Dominican mystic Meister, Meister Eckhart wrote, do you want to know what goes on at the core of the Trinity? At the core of the Trinity, the creator laughs and gives birth to wisdom. Wisdom laughs back at the creator and gives birth to the spirit. The whole Trinity laughs and gives birth to us. This message echoes loudly from German Jesuit and theologian, Karl Rahner, who is quoted as saying, we stand in awestruck silence before such love that is beyond all telling. Next up is Ron Roheiser, the Order of Mary Immaculate, the president of the Oblate School of Theology in San Antonio, Texas. And Ron observes, God is a trinity, a flow of relationships to be experienced in community. He goes on to say, if this is true, and scripture assures us that it is, then the realities of dealing with each other in community, at the dinner table, over a bottle of wine, or an argument, not to mention the simple giving and receiving of hospitality are not pure secular experiences, but the stuff of church, the place where the life of God flows through us, literally flows through us. This sense of Trinity as a flow of relationships to be experienced in community is easy to relate to. Catherine Ford, while a student at Harvard, pursuing a master's in divinity, found herself wrestling with systemic gender and patriarchy bias in religious systems. She concluded in a homily that she preached, God is not a person. God is not a being. God is being itself. Carol Dempsey, a Dominican who teaches biblical studies at the University of Portland in Oregon, suggests that Trinity Sunday is a time to reflect on the oneness of the divine permeating and pulsating through all of creation, filling earth's creatures with fecundity, easy for me to say, fecundity, beauty, wonder, and the marvelous capacity to relate, to love. She suggests a new understanding of Trinity as energy, that which exists at the center of all created matter and the ground of all being from a scientific perspective. Ah, the equation then, includes love and laughter and self-giving and flow of relationships and God as being itself and energy. Elizabeth Johnson, the sister of St. Joseph, Fordham professor and the author of She Who Is suggests different metaphor systems are needed to show the equality mutuality and reciprocal dynamism of Trinitarian relations. At its root, Trinity is encounter with holy mystery, compassionate, liberating love in community. These days, the phrases I choose to represent Trinity are either Dickinson's bee, butterfly, and breeze, or Love, ever creating, energizing, and animating us and our world. Both resonate more deeply for me than Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
how do you experience Trinity?